Transparency and accountability are the cornerstone of a functioning democracy. They are the unit of analysis to determine if a government is of the people, by the people, and for the people. Irrespective of the position you occupy, transparency and accountability are the fabric of functioning democracy. And that is why in a functioning democracy, no one is above the law and no one is below the law. In fact, in a functioning democracy, the law is the law. In Africa, it is common to hear government surrogates and some of their psychophants chorusing the song, we are a democratic nation. We are a nation full with democracy. In fact, some will go to an extent to tell you that we are a nation that have what is called a, an advanced system of democracy. They will sing this song to you about democracy, but when you ask how transparent and how accountable the governments are, their governments are in Africa, they will be quick to deploy their arsenals of ministers and surrogates to attack you and to use instruments of law to clam on you. You will be tagged a destabilizer. You will be tagged someone who want to uh, attack state institution. You will be tagged as someone who want to plunge the nation into anarchy chaos and thus you will be reminded about your social responsibility in respecting state institutions despite the fact that you are merely exercising the same right that they established as democracy which they say is government of the people by the people and for the people to address the issue of transparency in Cameroon there was the establishment of the Constitution which is the main document binding Cameroonians and establishing the rule of law under which the Republic is functioning and under which Cameroonians are supposed to function, irrespective of their language, culture, size, religion, sex, or gender. All this was established in Cameroon's constitution. And to further clarify this and to fight against corruption, misappropriation, and embezzlement, there was the establishment of Article 66 of our darling constitution in Cameroon. Article 66 was established. It was established at the time when many saw that this is the KO or this is the panacea. What will help us identify embezzlers, those that misappropriate state funds, and those that actually misuse state funds for their personal gains. But 30 years or more than 30 years after the establishment of Cameroon's constitution with serious amendment done in 1996, the text of application of Article 66 has not yet been signed. This is pushing Cameroonians and people of goodwill to ask the question, who is against the signing of the text of application of Article 66? Who does it benefit more than 30 years that this Article 66, the text of application, has not yet been signed? Who are those who are supposed to sign the text of application? The person who is supposed to sign the text of application for more than 30 years, has the person forgotten about this very important provision of our Constitution that will help us quickly reduce or stamp out corruption? embezzlement and misappropriation with a constant embezzlement of state funds with a constant attack of state institution by people who deem or feel that corruption is all-time high many are asking the question that why don't we go back and look at what is enshrined in our darling constitution article 66 that talk about the declaration of asset and the question that others keep asking is is the person who is supposed to sign the text of application of the ninth of the article 66 of our beloved constitution is he walking on foot if he's walking on foot why don't we accelerate his movement as we are accelerating decentralization in our nation however many also who are hearing this for their very first time may be asking the question what is this article 66 what does it state and how important is it 
in the core of the nation. In the summary of this Article 66, it is clear and it states, which I will read it during the course of the program, but in a rough summary, it states that those as, who are government officials, elected officials, and those within the government core ought to declare their assets before they, got, they get into office. They declare their asset. The number of cars, houses, salary they have, and also have to declare their asset after the end of their tenure. But this is not the case. And this has not been the case for over a long time now. So, as citizens of Cameroon are now being asked to declare their asset and their tax following the newly established tax system, where you are supposed to declare your salaries that you receive the different form of salary, either that which is formal and informal, and also supposed to declare the number of lands you have according to the recent established law. Many are asking that, why is it that the common man are now being asked to do the same thing that officials ought to have done by declaring their asset in Article 66 and asking, when are we going to have this text of application signed? Is it that the members of parliament and the senators are not very much aware about this text of application which has not been signed, or does it benefit them? Or should we not ask these questions? This is House of Commons with me, Tamai Javis. I have happy Sunday to all those of you watching us from different parts of the world. Those of you watching us on Facebook, I want to wish you a very, very happy Sunday. This is the second to the last Sunday, of, of, if not the third Sunday of uh, the month of July. We are already in the mid-year, and we are now in July. And also, those of you who actually wrote and passed the baccalaureate, I want to wish you a very, very happy congratulation. Despite the fact that the results were very, very, very horrible in terms of the percentages scored across the entire nation, with the Southwest region being the top of baccalaureate this year. I want to wish those in the Southwest region a very big congratulations and those within also littoral, also those who actually managed to be among the top four, including the Northwest region among the top four. I want to wish you guys a very happy congratulations. And to those of you who are awaiting your generous Certificate of Education, GCE, which is supposed by the calendar of the Commons General Certificate of Education Board, supposed to come out on the 26th of this month. We want to also wish you guys a uh, success in advance and that regardless of the outcome, education and examination, to be more precise, is not the true knowledge of a child that if you happen not to pass, take it easy. As it is often said, it's Yanko. I also want to wish you a very, very happy Sunday to you, Mr. Nyam Robert from the United States of America. My very good brother, Mr. Nyam Robert, and your wife, Madam Joan, a very, very happy Sunday to you guys in the United States of America. I want to also wish uh, your wife happy Sunday and all those of you watching us from different parts of the world, those of you watching us in Bamenda, those of you watching us in Yaounde, those of you watching us in the Boloa, those of you watching us in the eastern part of the nation, and of course our viewers in the northern part of Cameroon. I want to wish you guys a very, very happy Sunday. We will continue the program by me introducing to you my guest with whom we are going to have a discussion here today looking at the dreaded Article 66. He is a very strong legal mind and someone that has also played a key role in the, re in the establishment or to push government to action in the organization of the bar exam examination which was written. He had to petition the Minister Minister of State, the Minister of, 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 of Justice, that there is need for this by exam to be written. He has also carried out a series of petitions against some 
institutions which are not working and also have been fighting for the right of several persons within the nation to ensure that the law should be respected. He has dedicated his services to enable that those who don't have financial resources to meet up with legal proceedings actually get to him and he has facilitated some of their cases by representing them using his own phone and resources. He's also aspiring for good governance and believe that we as Cameroonians ought to play our collective responsibility in developing our nation and holding uh, people to power accountability and those who are supposed to render accountability to power. He is Barrister Anya Lewis from Boya, the town of legendary hospitality, whom I called the law. The law, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday to you, Mr. Javis. Thank you for having me here. It's always an honor to be live on the uh, House of Commons. It's a great program. I'm always happy to participate in any program that has to do with my Media Prime TV. Greetings to all the Taylor viewers. Happy Sunday to you all. Also in the studio, we are joined by a civil society advocate who is also one of those that believe in good governance and also have a firm belief that our current educational system should be, should be restructured to meet on with the demands and that we should move more on education that is based on resilience, that's aimed at impacting the students to see how they can actually become creative rather than reading long literature. He is also a, a sound engineer, uh, an, a, an engineer in terms of installing solar panels across the nation and also if you probably want your solar panels to be installed, you can get to him, Nick Anu. Happy Sunday and thanks for joining us. Happy Sunday to you, Mr. Javis, and happy Sunday to my co-panelist Barrester Lewis and welcome, welcome. happy Sunday to uh, fellow uh, lovers of House of Common across the, uh, the, the globe. Thank you. And thank you too. We also await <coughs> the arrival of Senior Barrister Ashul Emmanuel, who is the president, the national president of the reform party is on his way he just indicated that he's on his way he shall be joining us in the course of our discussion today we are looking at article 66 the declaration of asset more than 30 years still waiting on the text of application the person who is to sign this text of application is he working on foot or should we not ask such a question barrister anya lewis i begin with you you are a legal mind we, we are looking at the constitution here and oftentimes we are reminded that, oh, we have good, good article in our constitution. But when you look at this uh, cacophony, what can you make of it first? Well, it's, it's very clear. Article 66 of the constitution makes it very clear that uh, there will be declaration of assets. But to start talking about the declaration of assets, we must first of all go behind. The current constitution was put in place in the year 1996, and its article 66 states clearly that key government officials, elected and appointed government officials, uh, shall declare their assets and property. But we see that since 1996 to 2024, nothing has been done in that regard. However, in 2006, the government in fact put it in place the declaration of assets and property law. But they did not put in place the implementing decree. Which is the text of application. Exactly. Section 17 of that 2006 law on the declaration of assets and property gives the President of the Republic the sole power, exclusive power, to be the one to put in place that text of application. But right to this day, there is no text of application. And it's blocking the full, in fact, the implementation of the 1996 Constitution, and especially Section 66. What is the problem? <laughs> we see that there is a lacking of total government commitment. The political and government will to implement Article 66 of the Constitution is really lacking. Why is it really lacking? Nobody can really answer that question. But when you look at it, how many years today, since 1996, uh, it shows that the government in place doesn't want to implement Article 66 and the 2006 law on the declaration of assets and property. We can only talk, but I must appeal to the government officials in general and the President of the Republic in particular to move with speed because time is passing. The fact that the 1996 constitution is valid in Cameroon, it means that all its provisions, all the provisions of the constitution are supposed to be implemented. And if we look at our 1996 Constitution, we see that the only key article 
of that constitution which is not respected, which is not being implemented, is that Article 66. So my appeal to the President of the Republic is to take action and make it history, at least delay, defeat, equity. We all know that. <laughs> but it's better to be late than never. He so said it in 2014 when he came to Boya, that it's better to be late than never. <laughs> well, it's like that's a common practice in Cameroon. We can only hope. But this president should be should take action. That's what I'm calling for. Okay, and um, I will also uh, briefly uh, remain with you on that. Uh, you uh, talked about, before coming to Nike, you talked about the fact that it is better to be late uh, than never. Yes. Uh, are you seeking to petition the president this time? Because the 2006 says the president has the power, only the president has the power of that text of application. Well, as a lawyer... You petitioned the minister. Yes, it's true. <laughs> I sued the minister at the high court to organize the bar exams, and to God be the glory, is history. It has been organized. Well, concerning the case of Article 66 and its implementation by the President of the Republic, let me say I reserve my, my discretion. <laughs> I reserve everything. I, I have, cannot say uh, I will soon, but I reserve it for now. Anything I, can happen anytime. I, have I can take any action. It's not about being afraid. I'm okay. a long man. As lawyers, the highest tool I have is to go to court. Okay, so thank if you. it's going to court, I don't have any problem. <laughs> okay, Nick Anu, I'll come briefly with you on this... Uh, let us look at this Article 66. He, Barrister Anya has said that, of course, it was established in 1996 and also stated in 2006 that the president has the power to establish the text of application. We are counting 1996 decentralization was signed. It took the anglophone crisis for us to start hearing the word accelerated decentralization. And should we wait for, again for a major issue to start talking about the text of application, accelerated text of application? No, it is a clear indication that there is no political way to come out with a text of, of application because the, even if you come out with a text of application, the first person who is supposed to declare his answer is supposed to be the president. He's supposed to lead the way so that his ministers and directors and other state functionaries can follow suit. But if the president is not the first to do that, you don't expect a minister to declare their own asset. So they're hiding behind that text of application to plunder the state resources as they like. So it, it, it boils down to the f kind of a presidential system we have. In, in maybe the constitution defined as we have a semi-presidential system, but in practice it is a kind of hyper-presidential system that we have. All the powers boils down to the president. That's why you see the, the parliament cannot petition the president to do that because that is, first of all, the, the duty of the lawmakers. I suppose we want to petition the president concerning that to come up with a text of application. But you see, everybody is afraid to do that um, because of the powers of the president. So we cannot hope that will happen in this current republic. We can only pray and hope that the next republic, that kind of thing will happen. But in reality, we don't expect that to happen now. <laughs> so if you are, uh, you see, like he said, the president of the republic mm. is supposed to, to show the way, lead the way, yeah. and we are supposed to lead by example. How can you be the president of the republic if you don't respect the rule of law? <laughs> it's, it's, it's really the uh, president is a law, baby. Okay. Uh, senior, we have we have been joined by the national president of the reform party, and who is of the opinion that the reform party has what it takes to stabilize Cameroon's economy, Cameroon's legal system or judicial system also cameroon's uh political system above all to reorganize the structure of cameroon to enable that those within diaspora are also given the pride of place to have their voices heard in cameroon by possibly having a dual nationality that will establish a green road for them to come and invest heavily in Cameroon. He also believes in the transformation of the educational system that will be based on empowering the students within our circle to become more productive, hands-on education, which is based on giving skills 50-50 practical basis and not just enabling the students to read Wood Discovery by Niger Mongo Park. He is someone also that is fighting hard to ensure that justice is done and represented a lot of internally displaced persons and those within the ambit of the Anglophone crisis 
who does not have or who don't have access to legal counsel. He has dedicated his own service and his own funds, also like Barista Anya, to enable these same persons to have justice. And because he believed that justice delayed is justice denied. To him, he of the opinion that he who goes to law must go with clean hands. Senior Barista Ashu Emmanuel. Happy Sunday and thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Tamai Javis. Uh, good afternoon to all the uh, fellow panelists. Good afternoon to Reform Party militants and sympathizers the world over, and especially those in Cameroon. Um, I'm happy to be here with you today to once again look at the burning issues that are tormenting Cameroonians. Okay. And the law, you are, you have seen two republics here, eh? the Aijo and this regular republic, and now you are aiming for a third republic. Article 66, since 1996 that this constitution was amended and brought in, Barista Anya talked also about the fact that in 2006 there was also the law of the declaration of assets giving the president of the republic a power to sign the text of application. We are counting from 1996 to date, and from 2006 to date, it took the anglophone crisis for us to hear about accelerated decentralization. Should we wait again for another crisis for the declaration of assets, which is one of the panacea to quickly stamp corruption and embezzlement? Well, um, thank you for your question. I, like one of uh, my co-panelists said, he who does not have an interest will not want to venture into something. So to declare assets means that you are inviting the population and the public to visit your private property and uh, call you to accountability. So it, it just it turns around that. And we have this problem of um, political will. Does the regime in place have the political will to allow Cameroonians to know what its members own as property. Is it in their interest? Because the whole problem now, you see, we have the luxury of being ruled by, by some, somebody who is a, a, a justice on his way out. Is it on the day that he's going out of the, he's, that he's about to leave office that he's going to declare his assets? I don't think that is possible because he would have done so if you asked him to do so when he was just 30 years in office. That would have been possible. But now he's looking for who to hand over power to and you're asking him to declare assets. No, Masa. That doesn't look nice. So. It's as if you're asking him to uh, throw away all that he has worked, worked throughout the years. So I think that like um, my good friend over there said, we should expect maybe the, the reform party regime to <laughs> to introduce this thing of her uh, declaration of assets because it is the road way is the way to accountability if you before you take office tell the people i own a villa at uh, bonaberry i own a farm of about 10 hectares in Ewele. apart from that i don't have something else <laughs> The day we see you flying in the private jet, you will tell us where that money came from to buy the private jet. Because it's easy for us to know your salary. Yes. The salary is not nice. It's not the state giving the salary. It's easy. So it is a gateway to accountability. And I am saying that from my own observation, I see that nobody in power there has the political will or any other interest to invite people to come start asking questions at the time that people want to go to sleep. So... I, I think that we should only count on the future, uh, the, the, the next government, the next regime, to put in place this type of measure that will prevent people from continuing to siphon huge amounts of money belonging to Cameroonians, which will be used to carry out meaningful de developmental projects. Well, it's only our prayer that that regime should be led by reform party because if you look at the others i'm very sorry eh? i don't see who of them want to declare assets because many look like hungry wolves there are some who have even started selling 
our resources before even being elected to office. So you can imagine what they will do. <laughs> you know, we all know that some of us sold bauxite, our bauxite before even they could be they, they could be presidential candidates. So it is a, really our 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 dream that this country be given to some matured Cameroonian with a straight and stable mind. A right thinking person who will not want to sell all the underground, all the underground wealth of this country, empty all the pockets of all the citizens and make sure that nobody has anything. Because under this present regime now, the only thing that we still we are still free to use is oxygen. Because if uh, if they know how to tax that oxygen that you breathe, I'm sure that they will visit it. So the accountability is the problem here. You ask them how they use the money that they are collecting from every from everybody. They don't want you to ask a question. They don't want you to ask. Them, oh, you say, okay, you have taken this one, you have taken that one. My learned colleague here will tell you. At the Supreme Court, because we thought that this thing was only was only uh, with other professions <laughs> at the Supreme Court. We were previously required to file our memoirs. When you want to file a memoir, the law, no law says that you should stamp it. They started by saying you stamp the f uh, one copy, and then the four others are like that. But now they're asking you, they ask us to stamp all the copies. So if you have a memoir of, 20, of 30 pages, and uh, you are produ produ producing it in five copies, that gives you... 30 times 5. <clears throat> 150 pages times 1,500. You can, you can imagine direct tax on one person. And I want to say that this direct tax is not provided for by the law. You come down to the courts here. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. So these guys, I mean, they are squeezing the people dry. Like somebody who has washed his towel and is squeezing it. So you want to ask them, once you give them the uh, give the population the opportunity to ask them what they are doing with that money. No, sir. That's not feasible now. But is that not what democracy states? They don't want you to ask any question. So that's why they will not ask, they will not allow you to have the opportunity of knowing what they own and what they don't own. Okay. I will be coming back to you. Uh, Barista Anya. Um, we are talking about the fight against that corruption. We've had COVID gates and the rest. Don't we see that the fight against corruption, like a senior barrister said here, it begins by declaration of assets? It's very important. That declaration of assets is very important because it's through the declaration of assets that you know before office the amount of property worth that the appointed or elected, elected official had. And you, you can be able to evaluate him or her after office. And let's not forget the fact that uh, it starts at the level of the presidency. The president has to declare, as per the law, the president has to declare his assets and property. Let me go, come by saying that uh, the law says that 60 days after elect, an elected official is elected or after appointment, in 90 days you declare your assets. Then 60 days maximum after you have left office, you declare the assets. However, those who are holding office in the course why this law came in power, they have 90 days to declare their assets. But since it is not put in place yet, we are hoping until then. But the object of this law is to try is for accountability. Because now, if people don't declare their assets, you don't know how much they owe. How can you really try to come and evaluate them after they have left office? Is it possible? We see in Cameroon today, you see young public servants when they enter into customs and now all these sensitive, lucrative areas. Overnight, they start building houses, driving big cars, you ask yourself, is it this public service that they are doing or is something else? Because when you look at their salary, it's not commensurate. You cannot reconcile it. You cannot, you cannot reconcile it. So, and that is why you see there's that lack of the willpower for government to implement that Article 66 because if they implement it, people can easily question that but this official, this appointed official, three years ago you were appointed, but now 
two, three years ago, you are building this house, you have this kind of car, your salary is like this. Where did you get the money? You have just voted a mayor within a few months, you have a big SUV. You cannot imagine <laughs> in country where we have people studying under mango trees. We don't have good roads. All the roads in Cameroon are bad. All the roads in Cameroon are bad. Okay, we 70%, 70% of the tar roads in Cameroon are bad. 70%. Everybody can acknowledge that fact. I just came from Boya today, from here to Boya, bad potholes everywhere. You have a toll gate, beautiful toll gate. The money for toll gate <laughs> is meant for road maintenance. But has the government ever given accountability? <laughs> beautiful, <money>? ideal <laughs> toll gate. Is it working? <laughs> where, the, where the toll gates are even located are very bad. If you, if you drive, I just came in this morning from Chang. We pass around Banga, where the toll gate is, where they're collecting money. The vehicles are stuck there. Because of the bad roads, the bad it's nature serious. of the roads are there. It's a serious yes. issue. Vehicles get bad there, but they, are sick or they struggle to pass, they pay money. So it shows you the level of uh, a, a negligence that this regime has, that they, they are not interested in, in, it, in, in accountability. Of course, any government cannot function without accountability. Any government that functions without accountability, they are gangsters. They are not a government. It's, because even in your personal home, you cannot... You cannot run your own personal home without accountability. It's just like giving your money, give money to children. They just do what they like. They don't come back and give you account. They don't give you any results. And you just sit quiet as a father. You call yourself a father. So you are not a father. It's a, no. It's a lesson mm. very yeah. Now, Nick, you mm. even this mm. issue, like even you talk mm. about the target in Chang, the mm. one in Buya, where you are going, mm. the area where you are going, yeah. where that lady stands to collect money, where you are going, is bad. It's bad. <laughs> where she stands is bad. Mm. Now. When we are talking about this issue of accountability and declaration of asset, let's start with Libya. You are from that area. Uh, now, when you look at the, the, the resources there, look at the of elected officials, how do you balance the, the management of resources now? The people of Libya, are they even conscious? <laughs> that one is a sad case that we don't even want to talk about now. It's very, 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 very sad um, that there's a, a kind of group of elites there that have taken hostage of the place politically they don't want any any young person to emerge and take political position they don't want to do anything they don't want to do a, any development the most of them have been in office for uh, so long you don't see anything they do there the roads are bad like now i I'm just i walk there all the time i just last week every week i'm there right now moving there with the vehicle is very very impracticable and uh, uh, most of my projects are there. Most of my material are stocked on the way. I was traveling there yesterday. I had to come back to Douala because I could not go. I could not continue the journey because of the bad road. And that is what we have been facing here in, here out. Here in, here out. And that, that road is a, a very good uh, passageway, like from a very good passageway, like part of the Trans-African Road. If you tie that road from Chang, through um, uh, Fontem, through uh, Bakeba, and then through, link it to Manfi. It is very economically viable than the one that passes through Bamenda. Yeah. And these are the kind of things, uh, of course, the cry of, of the, our cry is not even that that road should be tarred for. At least they should even maintain it so that the, the, the people plan that road. That. They, they should, should, should be tarred. Tar tar yeah, tar 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 it must be tar I'm talking about the minimum. The <laughs> minimum is that they should even maintain the road. The minimum so is not to tar. That's a maximum to them. But yeah. you people have big officials <laughs> in the BLM, big <laughs> names. Yeah, of course we have big names, but don't it's they go to the village? No, they don't go. They don't go to the village. Yes. Except during campaigns that they used to come, but now with the crisis, you don't even see them. Okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> Baris, uh, senior barrister, let me take on this uh, Article 66. They are actually one of the issues about your party. I intend to solve it because we are looking at my, uh, 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 CONAC. What unit of analysis is CONAC using to fight against corruption and embezzlement? Well, because this Article 66 would that be one of the main <laughs> units of analysis where CONAC can say, hey, you know what, this is what you, you gave us. But let me read on this program. You will have to, have to answer that. How your party intend to solve that? Or will your party dissolve CONAC? Or will your party mm -hmm. restructure it based on Solving this issue because we're looking at the constitution itself. Article six, uh, 60, section 66 of the constitution says that the president of the republic, the prime minister, members of government, uh, and uh, members of government, and person ranking as such, the, pri uh, the president and the members of 
the Bureau of the National Assembly, the President and members of the Bureau of the Senate, members of Parliament, Senators, all holders of an elective office, Secretary Generals of Ministries and Persons Ranking as such, Director of the Central Administration, General Managers of Public and Semi-Public Enterprises, Judiciary and Legal Officers, Administrative and pers Administrative Personnel in Charge of the Tax Base, collection and handling of public funds, all managers of public vo votes and property shall declare the asset and property at the beginning and at the end of their tenure of office. The other categories of persons to whom the provisions of this article shall apply and the, con the conditions implemented thereof shall be determined by law. Senior Barrister. Konak is fighting against corruption. How? What unit of analysis is Konak using? If this Article 66 that ought to have helped Konak is not being used, Mr. Time Majoris, uh, I want to draw your attention to the fact that that article is poorly worded. If you go by what uh, my learned colleague here said earlier, somebody is employed as a custom official for two days. You see him building a skyscraper. Did you hear custom officials being mentioned there? Thank you. That thing is poorly drafted. I am telling you that if Reform Party were to be in power, we are going to recoin that provision. Every civil servant or any contractor officer, any contract officer or any civil servant, any person assuming any public office, you will have to declare assets. Because, you see, it is horrible. Look at, he was talking about customs. What about police people? What about gendarmes? Look at what they do on the roads. What about soldiers who are being sent to our, uh, our side there to maintain security? What are they doing? They erect barriers where they collect monies openly. And they pride themselves of having built three-story buildings in Douala, two in Yaoundé. No, sir, it has to end. What is Konak not doing when we look at this collection of the rules? We are saying we start with the law, it's with that constitution itself. It is poorly crafted. I am telling you that we have to recraft it to make it include yeah. all yeah. civil servants, all contract officers, and any person handling public offices. Public offices. That way, I will see how a gendarme, a policeman, will go collect bribe and build luxurious houses unaccounted for. Because that is just part of it. They've not gone further even to tell you what should happen to the people who have property they cannot account for. They haven't gone. I say it's poorly crafted. <laughs> I'm a lawyer and I'm telling you that we shall craft a better constitution and know that nobody will be able to feed them with public funds. Now let's come now to Konak. With all the good intentions that have been spelled on the face of Konak, anti-corruption unit, all the work they do has to be tabled, put on the table of the President of the Republic. Konak can well be called a toothless bulldog because you will see all the corruption, you only make report and put on the table of the president. You ask the question, should you restructure? Well, if you want conduct to be effective, why do you want the, their report to be sent to the president? Hand that report to the procurator of the Republic of the, of the area of, comp of competence. Meaning that you should move from an advisory Let, body to a regulatory body. Uh, an independent in, body. in forestry matters. In forestry matters, I'm talking under the control of my learned colleague here. Forestry officials are authorized to prosecute offenses alongside the legal department. That should be the case with Konak. Their officials should be authorized to prosecute these corruption matters alongside the legal department. Because they are the ones who investigated it. They should not only be given the possibility of sending the matters to court, they should be given the possibility of prosecuting alongside with the legal department. Let us see how you have BB reports denouncing things and nothing is being done. Because you, you are overcrowding the table of the President of the Republic. 
He has to read those tons and tons. No, no. Let's face facts. It's not possible for it's not humanly possible for any president to go through all those tons and still manage the other affairs of the country. It's not possible. So please remove that ambit of it. Let Konak be given the possibility of handing his report to the competent legal de department and then prosecute this matter alongside the legal department. We'll see how things will not go. So that's, that's our position. Because the party position. Yes, Konak is doing a nice job. They investigate. I've seen them on several occasions. But what comes out of that, that investigation? Nothing. In few cases, you see something. Because when I look at the president's duties, I look at the volumes that Konak produces. I mean, how do you expect it? He has to read what Konak produces. He has to read what the uh, Supreme State Audit produces. Yeah, Judicial Council. Oh my God. Is he a superman? <laughs> no. Yeah, human rights. <laughs> a he human has rights. Has to read that of a human oh, rights oh, no, 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 please. This, this man is not a superman now. Uh -uh. Humanly, it is not possible. So look, you want things to be effective? Connor should be like FBI. You have found it? Okay, go to court. Or oh, EFCC, Nigeria. Go to and court it, and... It would be good for Connor to have the power to arrest Yes. Of course, yes. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. They should have the power to arrest. They should have the power to arrest. So if they if they see you, they should not only arrest, arrest and indict. The thing is that they should have their specialized investigators, anti-corruption police, anti-corruption lawyers, and anti-corruption prosecutors. That means they themselves, Konak should have the power to prosecute you. Without relying on the legal department. Okay. Uh, but senior barrister, Konak itself has not declared as a tenant. <laughs> no, Konak is not an individual. The Konak, members of Konak have not declared as a tenant. No, but you, they cannot, they <laughs> cannot operate ex nihilo. You see, <laughs> Konak officials cannot go declaring assets when there is no decree that enables people to, uh, to so to do. So you, you see, they will declare their assets when under this regime. The possibility is put on the table for them to do so. Declare but you see, we are saying that as in a, uh, in a nutshell, when you were introducing, when you were welcoming me, you made mention of the fact that we believed Reform Party believes that this country should have a good constitution. Yes. We don't believe in this system where people they, they enact a constitution and then tell you that something else will be determined by decree. No, sir. Your constitution should have everything. Obviously. It should contain everything. There is no decree. Yeah, because how do you extract this decree that you come again? I am telling that's you, Mr. Atama Javis, Reform Party will make sure that if we are putting a concern on the table, it should contain every provision for its enforcement. There is no such thing of, of decree of application. No such thing. So when you say declare asset, it should be mentioned in the constitution how the assets should be declared. By who? Up to what level? At what time? everything okay. all the details should be given so we should not rely on any other decree i mean you are you are making the decree superior to the constitution okay because uh now like we are seeing that a decree yeah. is holding the constitution <laughs> hostage, <laughs> hostage <yeah. laughs> okay good afternoon the entire panel thank you both very much for, for your contribution towards nation building the truth is that cameroon is facing a serious power vacuum we have to emulate the america exam in more than 35 senators exactly. of the democrat a party are calling on Joe Biden to job, but our case in Cameroon, our die-hearted politicians are are given but a motion of support to President Pobia in who is 92 implies that the Article 66 is just a charm. This is Ibazogo writing from Bamenda. This one says, greetings, dear panelists. Thank you uh, for the good work you are doing to sensitize Cameroonians. Uh, characteristics of good governance is really absent in Cameroon. The government is tired and really needs to actually go out. Where can I do uh, a voter's uh, registration in Limbe? Where you can do in Limbe? Uh, where can you do in Limbe? I'm sure they say, like, I'm in Limbe. Mm -hmm. But in most cases, they go to the Jews' office. Go, just go to the Jews' office. office. Uh, ask at the Jews office. If they go to the Jews' office, they are not uh, doing it there. They should ask. They will better direct. We had the list. We have the list of, of, of centers. Okay. okay. Uh, okay, um, just I will send, I'll send you, it to you so you will. Uh, yeah, I will send you the list. But where senior barrister, the national president of Reform Party, will send it to me. This one says, Good afternoon, Mr. Javis. I am a keen listener of your program and I always admire it. Please, the question that 
keeps worrying my mind is, is there any other person or office that is more than our president of the republic or his office? If not, then to who is he supposed to declare his asset? My regard to senior barrister Ashu. Uh, this is uh, Chris from Limbe. Uh, this other one right says they have been given... Um, they have been given the power to decide when Article 66 applied because they know he will never activate it as he plans to stay in power forever and will need his circle of bad government uh, officials to ensure that it is doing well. Uh, it is in so doing, they will collectively embezzle state funds and no questions asked. Um, let me come to you, Barrister Lewis. Barrister Lewis, uh, now it's clear that okay. Like Senior Barrister said, how come is it that the text of application is holding the Constitution, which is supposed to be the main document of the land hostage? And second question to you, what happened to those who are found having assets which they did not enter office with? Because you say you have to declare. Okay, now I've declared. But the, After issue I'm now leaving. Is, the issue now is how would they be found with assets who did not have <laughs> so, the Yeah, so how come we are in a we are illegal mind? How come we're in a system where, okay, you have seen that this person actually embezzled money and bought this land. You have seen that this person has collected money from the state, like COVID. How are those people now being judged? Or you, you cannot say you have seen that this person has embezzled money. That's an allegation. Yeah, we, we, let's say you have tried. Yes, before okay. The court before they, they call it the court has the power to okay. do that. Now, my question to you is how come do we, 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 we find ourselves in a system where the, the text of application is not being superior than the constitution? Yeah, if you look at our constitution, we had the, I don't know how I can say it, short-sighted the parliamentarians back in the days, because back then we didn't have senators. So even our constitution makes international treaties to override our constitution. International treaties. No, what is it? That one is very clear. But now, you see that Article 66 states that uh, uh, makes provision for the law and declaration of assets. The 2006 law comes again comes again and regulates it <laughs> but with a shortcoming with the challenge because it does not make provision no, for the implementing the <laughs> decree you see the constitution is supposed to be the ground law the yeah. number one law of the, the supreme land. yes the number one law of the land but you see that with the 2006 law they are not respecting <laughs> the constitution the proper thing the legislators were supposed to have done was to regulate, make provision on the organization functioning of the commission. Because a commission has to be. They cannot just declare assets in the air. The 2006 law makes provision for that, the uh, commission for the declaration of assets and property. Until that commission is put in place, nothing can be done. It will just be in the air like that. And to fight corruption is left for the, like you see now, there is a special criminal court it tries matters of uh, above 50 million. You see that even the law allows public officials to embezzle, <laughs> embezzle, embezzle, embezzle. <laughs> above 50 million. Above 50 million. <laughs> 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 Before they say that now, they can try you. <laughs> it's not proper like that. It's not. No, the rest will go to, <laughs> to the high court and first starts. <laughs> depending, <laughs> depending on the. <laughs> <laughs> right on. <laughs> so you see the dying need for the implementation of that. Uh, that article is indispensable to have an effective fight against corruption in Cameroon because uh, without that, you cannot really evaluate. Don't forget, even the president also, until to this day, do we know the assets owned by the president of Republic of Cameroon? We do not. Which, as Cameroonian, is supposed to be a public information accessible to everybody. All government officials, elected officials, are supposed to disclose their assets, their wealth. Like you see in Nigeria, before the president takes office, he declares ministers in front of the, the National Assembly, in front of parliamentarians and senators, they declare their assets. That is transparency. The, the far-reaching effect of Article 66 is just about the fight against corruption. To make sure that public, public servants don't enrich themselves illicitly, don't embezzle, embezzle public funds, misappropriate public funds. It's not enough only to try people in court, but you know, as a public servant, public information, citizens have the right to public information. So sharing that information 
satisfy that, that requirement. But without that, it, it creates a very big problem in the fight against corruption. The anti-corruption commission, like a uh, senior counsel said, is a toothless bulldog. More of an advisory body. Of course. I, to me, I think that the uh, private anti-corruption civil organization, they have more power than the anti-corruption commission. Because it, an anti-corruption uh, organization or civil society organization can write a criminal complaint of corruption against a public official to the competent authority. But Kunak does not have that power. So, but everybody, any wise person knows that the government just put in place to satisfy international requirements, especially when it has to do with the international donors and organizations like the United Nations. To show that we have provision of accountability. Exactly. It's the United Nations that forced the government to put in place the Anti-Corruption Commission and all the accountability structures that we see in this society. Because if this Article 66 had been, if the text of application had been established within the framework of the Constitution, the issue of Glencore that Akeremuna is fighting for would have long been been, 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 been looked into the Glencore issue where it's established that people, some people collected a huge amount of money for contracts and the rest and the rest. We come back to you. Nick Ano, where do we go from here now? You are of the society. The lawyers are talking based on the legal perspective now, but where do we go from here? Because we are approaching an election year. We are approaching a year in 2025 where we are moving to a presidential election. Now, so what should be the, the way forward? What should be? Uh, in, in the United States, people, there are policies that are campaigning upon. But in Cameroon, we are either campaigning upon, we'll give you rice, we'll give you this, we'll give you that, we'll give you... In the United States, the border is a policy, the, the, the employment is a policy, uh, that foreign policy has a role to play, development, but yeah, in Cameroon, I don't know. What should be the way forward? No, the way forward is that we just will con continue to conscientize Cameroonians to be politically uh, interested in the affairs of the nation because it's as if it is, it, it, we are just a kind of nation of very selfish people that every, everybody mind only their business the issue of collective interest is not uh, that promoted uh, and that's why the public servants or, would, or the, the current political leadership can manipulate the masses as the one we are approaching an election year and you see most people are not interested in elections and uh, it is our duty to like encourage people to massively register even if they want to uh, still vote as um, as suppose as they, they are always doing at least if the number when well, it gets to a certain number that they cannot really manipulate and we can only encourage people more to take part in political activism so as to uh, to change most of these things, this uh, thing that this facing regime, this facing regime has put in place over the years. Yeah, Ab applying Article 66 now in this current regime, I don't see it. May the current regime that is coming into place, we can only play, pray on Cameroonians not to accept or not to allow this current regime to continue after in 2025. But if we keep sleeping. I think the regime will still continue because changing a person uh, is not enough to change in a regime. So it is up to Cameroonians to shun personal interests and focus more on collective interests. Because collectively, that's where we can survive. Individually, we are only divided. We cannot survive in this kind of dictatorship. A senior barrister, national president of the Reform Party, uh, we are looking at now an issue. You talked about the fact that if the reform party is in power, the issue of text of application will not be, they will not be an issue because normally it should be the constitution should have a clear cut what should be done, how it should be done, what will be who done for do the voters, and who should do it. Yep. For example, if you are found, if you 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 say this is declare asset, where do you, do you need to declare asset? How you need to declare it? And when you don't declare it, what afford what should, you? Yes, what should, uh, what should be done yeah, to you? what should be done to you? And also, yes. when you are found that you enter office with two houses and you are leaving office with five houses, what should be done to you? Correct. So that's what you say you are yes, going to do. Right. Yes. So how are you going to do that? Simply put all that in the constitution and you see that everything is applied. 
Now, man, let me ask you my question. There's uh, an issue where I also asked uh, Barrister Lewis, which he made mention of the fact that normally the Constitution is supposed to be sacrosanct and the number one document of the nation. And now we are looking at this aspect where we are more inclined with text of application, like the 2006 law. Now, there is, how do you put on a 2006 law which there is a Constitution? I don't, I'm not a legal mind. But I had, what I want to understand is why is it that there's a Constitution and there's a, a law which is actu actually regulating a constitution. <laughs> well, uh, you, you should table that question to Honorable Kamai again. <laughs> you <laughs> because, are legal, my help because, us, because help us understand because this. Because normally the constitution <laughs> is a grand, grand norm. That is the biggest uh, <laughs> law of the land. And you should not have uh, a, a smaller law that, that should come and contradict the constitution. You can have a constitutional law. Is a constitutional law, yes, you can. It, there can be a constitutional law, but just an ordinary law, no, sir. It, it shouldn't, it should not contradict the constitution in any way. So, those are the things that uh, make me feel like, like uh, joining issues with my good friend here, who said that 2025 is going to be very determining because Cameroonians have to get up, have to wake up from their slumber. We have reached a stage where. If we continue to sleep, we shall all die collectively. I don't know that there's another country in Africa that is suffering, that has as heavy a tax load as Cameroon. I don't know. I have been looking at, cannot find one yet. But when those people, when they're talking, they'll tell you, oh, in Senegal, um, um, uh, the full price is this one. Uh, where the price are low, they will never, a, they will, they will there never is, cite. There is a member of parliament that told the minister of finance, Louis Paul Motazé, uh, the man from that, Dian, yes, to that, tax uh, us more. They that should tax us taxes. more. <laughs> that he should tax us more. That uh, they look at America, most of their GDP, 40% of their GDP is coming from taxes. But he has not compared America development with Cameroon development. Eh? He said, Mr. Minister, will protect you. Tax us more. Sir, are you comparing his own area of origin to America? Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. He is from there. Do they have roads? Mm -hmm. What do they have there? Mm -hmm. A Kondo Titi beach was burned down mm -hmm. recently. Who has gone there to rebuild what? That man who calls himself a parliamentarian from that area, talking that type of thing. You see, I agree with my, my good friend here that Cameroonians have to get up. Because if we don't get up, these people will, you see, they have been succeeded in maintaining themselves in power through various means. Legal means, and then uh, crooked ones. It, I am not the one who said it. Zongang said the thing on television before Balafon that they stole e elections that were won by Fundi. Nobody said anything. So yeah, when he said that, I'm I authorized think... to say that they use crooked means because mm -hmm. their former person said it openly, and they have neither condemned him nor contradicted him. So we have proof that they do elections. Crookedly. Now, if we allow them to do what Zongang and his people did to John Frundi, then that will simply mean that elections will be rigged. This is the time to call on Cameroonians to stand up and defend their votes. Make sure that what Zongang and his people did to John Frundi should not happen again. Defend your vote. Don't only register massively. When you vote, make sure that those votes are counted. That the tally you get at the voting police station should be the final one that reaches up there. Snappy. That's right. Let us defend our votes. Let us make sure that no rigging will take place. Because people, they confess to rigging openly and nobody says a thing. Which means... And it was just quiet. Like the way the friend man says, Kill the deer, yeah? come sang. So, I mean, <laughs> see, they are saying nothing. They, no, it's true now. Maybe they are still taking their time to observe. Maybe they have not watched it. They themselves, I mean, <laughs> that type of dangerous uh, uh, statement is made. And the CPDM who are so vocal, none of them ever stood up anywhere to deny or to contradict. Which means what the man said is deemed to be true until the CPDM proves it wrong. Up to now like this, nobody has proved it wrong. So please. I am taking it to be true, and I'm calling on Cameroonians to stand up and defend their votes. Make sure no further rigging takes place in 2025. Let us put this regime out of place through the ballot box and put in place a, 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 a party that has 
what it takes. Reform Party is a very good, good example to take this uh, party country straight on to posterity, to, to prosperity. Thank you very much for House of Commons for enlightening on such a topic. Talking about a bribe in Cameroon, um, he can it can be solved. Even it cannot be solved. Even if those who lead right. us, Brad, it cannot be solved. Can even be solved if those right. who lead us are doing it can day in day night. So please, how can we solve it? Right. Now, okay, this is coming from an anonymous. That this other one says, um, "Good afternoon, good afternoon, uh, dear panelists, Mr. Boyce." Has uh, okay, you want intended to write Mr. B. I say Mr. B. I has failed Cameroonian. Let Cameroonian wake up from sleep. The Kenyan government has learned their lessons. Mokonya Abel writing from Boya, the town of legendary hospitality. This one says, Good afternoon, please. Where are we? Uh, please, where are Dash Dash in Moyuka going to Okay, where are us in Moyuka going to register? Uh, uh, register uh, from the election. This is coming from Rogers in your care. Okay, that way, can go to the council. so they can. If it, okay, go to the Boeka Council or you go to the jail's okay. office. You can register there for uh, your yeah, upcoming election. This one says, Good afternoon. I like Barrister Lewis and also Senior Barrister Ashu and also Nick Anu. This is a very, very important program. For a long time now, we have been asking the same question of Article 66. This is where campaigns should start for presidential election because when we look at the mm, misappropriation and embezzlement of state funds, I am tempted to say it's because people are not declaring their assets and that's why they are nicely enjoying our money, taking their side chicks and side girlfriends out of Cameroon driving in Prado and asking us that we should be taxed and pay huge sums of money. To me, I believe that parties who are going in for presidential election should start by launching this campaign of Article 66. Either it is well established or no, no. This is coming from Ayok in Buya. <laughs> But are you, do you have evidence that they are carrying their side chicks? Must he include side chicks? Maybe he has experience. Somebody was a Good day, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Javis and all the panelists. Thank you very much for this wonderful program. It is so sensitive and comes in a time when Cameroonians are vying in a positive change come 20, election 2025. I think that the constitution of Cameroon is not an extent is a, a, the Constitution of Cameroon is not to an extent applicable because all those who are to enforce the Constitution dine together and, of course, need to protect their selfish interests. All of these bodies, like CONAC, are just ceremonial and really no significance to the interests of the local population of Cameroon. Dribbling in uh, good Dibble is good, but it brings risks to the player. The government has dibbled for a while, and I see the risks to them. From the people of Cameroon, I encourage all Cameroonians who vote of Cameroon of voting age to keep registering massively. It is better to die standing than standing on your knees. Uh, special greetings to Senior Barrister Ashu and Barrister Anya, our legal advisor at African Law Student Association Cameroon. I am a Yapo Omega writing from Boya. Sure, by star, you probably may know Omega. <laughs> this other uh, one says, Mr. Javis, thank you very much from this year. Uh, viewer that just sent the message of side chicks. To me, they are taking the entire girls in Boya. Come and see how these politicians in Boya are flushing world. They make us feel like we are very poor and all the young girls in Moliko are bent on looking at those on Prados. Probably when they will start declaring their asset, our Boya girls will be free for us to use. But now we cannot because we are not mayor, senators and parliamentarians. Their surrogates are good at that. You will just see working with the young girl in Boya and just to hear a hunt beside you and the next time you see is exchange of number and you the young man <laughs> I can't continue I can't continue to left the bike I'm sorry I can't continue to read that message because the next line there is actually very very uh they are talking like that is the consequences of corruption <laughs> I don't know. It's you. Okay, I, I, I see you now. Okay. Um, now, they will, just briefly, 
There, there was a recent publication, the Bar Council reacted to the senior division officer of Fundi talking about those who intend to cause um, public protest or those who intend to advocate or tend to, you know, criticize, criticize the government. The government. We just also the means of communication that came out and reminded people of sense of uh, responsible nature, not attacking state institutions. Now, when you look at the Fundi's uh, SDU's outing, is it not repugnant to what the Constitution states? Yeah, it's, it's repugnant, illegal. In fact, it's illegal. Because the freedom of speech, right to association, right to speech, criticize association, is provided by the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. And it's a duly ratified human rights instrument in Cameroon. It's even above the jurisdiction of the deal to come out with that kind of communique. Senior Council here can confirm. So it's just that in Cameroon, you see senior divisional officers Divisional officers, they act in illegality all the time. When you talk about deporting, how do you deport? How can you deport? <laughs> you deport a citizen yeah. from one yeah. division <laughs> to another area within the same country. Come on. It shows you how most of our prefects here are criminals, not even uh, legal people. They don't respect the law. And the Minister of uh, Territorial Administration and Decentralization is always very active to come out and say that civil society is not following the law. But when you see that kind of case, of your subordinate, a divisional officer under your nose, with that kind of communique. And what he has said do? nothing, eh? What do you the do? The minister has said nothing. Yeah, he has In said a normal country, that but person if, should be If, if, if it's to, to come out mm. and caution and even warn and open his eyes against actors of the civil society. They always say Cameroon is a state of law. Mm. Mm. very quick. Cameroon is a state of law partially. And when it benefits the interest of the government, mm. let's be very clear about that. That deal, the senior divisional officer came out with that communique, is injurious. To the reputation of Cameroon nationally and internationally. And yeah, now using big words. The, the common man will not understand injurious. Please break it Let down. Let me just say it. <laughs> 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 I, 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 I even saw an international media report on that. Well, it's very, it's yes. very harmful. It's imagine, harmful. Imagine, yes, I'm a lawyer who talk with international mm. clients every day. International business wants investors. to come and invest in Cameroon. Seeing that even a small prefect, a small prefect, when you look at the structure, organizational structure of Cameroon, a small prefect, a small prefect, will just take that kind of communicate. What kind of message are you sending to potential investors? But yet, the Minister of Territorial Administration will not fire that kind of public official immediately. That kind of public official deserves to be fired. And in a country where we have a strong legislative arm of government, there will summon him immediately. To come before the, the parliament national, because that's a matter of national security. It means that all those in, in Fundi division they are not safe because they, they, don't, they don't have freedom to talk to even assemble, they cannot because of that communicate. There's but another one, a chief has there's another one that a chief has actually banned somebody from public space. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 has banned somebody from public space in this village. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he has sold some land. Similar in that, in that same in area. No. <laughs> if it's chief, I just forgot about his best senior divisional officer. That one is serious. Okay. Yes. You where you heard about that? What was your reaction? So I come to senior vice that I should. Yeah, it is just one of the scandals we have been witnessing in Cameroon. It's not the first to do that. We are used to seeing division officer and senior division officer behave in that manner because of the overzealous powers they give them. These people are not elected officials. They are appointed. They, they just hide under a certain decree. And then they have more power than those who are appointed. They have more power than, I mean, elected. they have more power than those who are elected. They are more, they, they lord over the, the, the mayors that are elected. I mean, people who are elected. In, in a normal country, we don't want to see that uh, coming. I hope maybe the reform party. What are you saying in a normal country? What do you mean? I mean, a country that respects the rule so of law. So, we know in a normal country. In a country that does not respect the rule of law is a jungle. It's not a, a normal country. Donald yes. Trump is a country. Yes. Yes. It's, not a, it's, it, it's not like me seeing what. We hope that if the, the reform party it comes to power, we're not uh, doing their promotion. If they come to power next year, 2025, they should be able to restructure some of this because we, we have a lot of stru them. structural injustice in Cameroon. The, the structural form of the state is very problematic. We have we need to form a Cameroon where we don't see senior division officers and deals. We want that kind of Cameroon. If we want to develop, if we don't want to develop, yes, we can keep them in place. <laughs> Yes, because they are not agents of development. Okay. Yeah, they are not agents of development. So if we want really a reformed Cameroon, some of these uh, uh, ambiguous structures have to be
Kata away with. Okay. Good afternoon to you all in the studio. We have been trying to this so-called uh, democratic system, but it's not working. We have seen the president influencing the old uh, constitution in his favor, and no one said anything. I am not voting, but my suggestion is that the only way out from this regime for the is for. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> the message is got in. <laughs> uh, please, truly, truly, Camoyans should wake up the, uh, this holiday, this holiday time, and we all can do, to do all can do this is fool ourselves with interquarter all, and all we can do this holiday is to fool ourselves with interquarter competitions and alcohol. Nobody is thinking of registering to vote and change government. Elecam is really absent in many places of registration. Uh, this other line says, uh, good afternoon, uh, great minds. H how possible can we change this regime through the ballot box with all these constitutional powers given to the president? I am afraid any attempt to reduce the power of the president is treason. We, a, uh, we, a Moses, that we, we need a mercy that won't betray the, uh, the masses to unseat the current regime. Freedom is not willingly given, but it is demanded. And how many politicians are ready and willing to embrace these odds to liberate his, uh, the, uh, his people? The, the ballot box is far from fetching for Elecam. Uh, Constitutional Councils, Ministry of Territorial Administration, ETC, uh, all answer to the president. But this is not the case. Uh, let me tell you, Senegal also was not the case. The issue is, once the people register massively, it's difficult for any government to steal an election. The pressure from the people forced the Constitutional Council in Senegal to bow down because they saw that there were more than 10 million opposition registered voters who voted. So you are dealing with 10 million people. You cannot easily hold 10 million people down. But look at 2018, just about 3 million voted. 3 million. We, among that 3 million, 1 point something voted a ruling party. 1 million are those who can easily be, you know, understand what I'm saying. But when you have a, a situation where you have at least an opposition of 7 million, it's difficult. We have 7 million now. Senior counsel. Uh, let me come back. Let me not say senior counsel because I'm not a lawyer. Senior barrister. <laughs> uh, because uh, uh, before by start, let me start using those big words of uh, me uh, why I become injurious uh, no, at least I've learned that one today uh, senior barrister I want to ask you this question which is um, you saw what happened in Fundi you are a, a how do you deport a Cameroonian in his own territory where the constitution says you are a Cameroonian either born by at the time of independence either from the Republic of Cameroon or Southern Cameroon and you enjoy the right to set it anywhere anytime and shine a right of public protest how do you deport somebody from his region and now my second question to you is what if that person is from that division what do we do with that person now <laughs> thank you Mr. Javis um, <laughs> let's start by saying that it is not a nice thing to insult anybody not only the president of the republic it is not a nice thing to insult people it is not good i will not uh, uh, advise any person to insult another person yeah and i will not want any person to insult the president of cameroon he is the president he is the first citizen let's give him some respect so that said Let's go now to Mr. Senior Divisional Officer. Uh, this gentleman um, cited the law on public order, uh, 90 slash 054. Now, this law simply says, in order to maintain public order or restore it when it is threatened, administrative officers are authorized to take the following measures. And one of those measures is control the movement of <coughs> people, of persons, and property. That is what that law says. Control the movement of persons and property. Now, how do you, by any stretch of the imagination, move, digress, from controlling the movement of people and property. and property to erecting yourself into a consular officer who issues visas <laughs> to people 
to nationals. I mean, do you see? This is this is so. Is that not secession? Because this declaring is so that that side will a deportation. This is so serious because you <laughs> erect yourself into a <laughs> consular <laughs> officer <laughs> to issue out or dish out visas to nationals. Visas are supposed to be given to foreigners. You want to give them to nationals that you can deport. Is that not cessation, Barry? No, I don't like me big words. <laughs> <laughs> because you say you are deporting, which means you are a republic within a republic. Now, look, this, this thing is very serious because, uh, you see, we may, be, we may laugh at it at times, but it is very serious because this is somebody who is one of the personal representatives of the head of state. By his function. He is a, a, a and then representative of the head of state in the national capital. Who says this type of thing? You see, you see how deep it goes. In in other words, it can easily be construed to mean that it is the head of state that is talking. So, so this, this man, I don't know whether he actually reasoned well. And he came out later now in a press conference to say, no, um, we're just trying to preempt. Wonderful. Is it because of the Nigerian protest that has been planned in the 29 that they are afraid that something Please, that may happen? Let me finish with him first. He wants to preempt. <laughs> I'll refer him back to that 1990 law. That law does not have make any provision for preventing <laughs> anything. He's just being prophetic. The law says <laughs> that when the public order is disturbed already, mm -hmm. you maintain the public order or you restore it. Mm -hmm. There is no room for preemption. There is even provision for the use of arms. <laughs> and to show you that this law is very, very serious. Any person, because that law contains a criminal provision in uh, uh, chapter 4. A criminal provision. Any person who infringes on the provision of that law will be punished with the penalty provided for by section 275 of the penal code, which is murder, which is life jail. <coughs> so how do you find place to accommodate a senior divisional officer who will come now to tell you that in a law in a situation where the law has provided criminal a criminal penalty of life jail which can only be pronounced by a court of law you SDO say you will deport people <laughs> SDO <laughs> you will deport people <laughs> on, on the basis of what? <laughs> You see, so <laughs> that's like, the thing. Is it not like saying that these people are not Cameroonians? No, the, 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 the issue is that if I could say something, <laughs> these Jews are not mostly there to serve Cameroonians properly. They are mostly there to serve the hierarchy and to serve some special interests that we don't really know. It's very clear. And it goes further to say there's one thing I've been talking about. You see the administration in Cameroon, our top administrators, right from the presidency right down, they don't have legal department staffed with lawyers because they don't get proper legal advice. An SD, uh, SDO of that caliber to come out with that communicate, you are supposed to get proper legal proper advice. Legal advice. Proper legal advice. Tough. Even at the level of the presidency, you see, even at the presidency, we don't have lawyers. At the legal we just write communication. They are there. They are there. Yeah, they are. I mean, well equipped. I they mean, are. Staffed. You have them. You go to the ministry. They may be there. Partially, I mean, they are minister, they are being consulted. The issue now is, I'm not talking I, about magistrates, they may have, but they are they being consulted. When, is, yeah. when, when we are senior talking about the lawyer, lawyer for the presidency, what senior, senior counselor? I'm saying that majority, yes, majority of government departments, when you go to the legal departments, you don't find lawyers. That's a big problem. Go to the National Assembly, go to the Senate, go to all the top government infrastructure, come right down to the grassroots, you will not see lawyers. And, only lawyers can give proper legal advice. Not magistrates, not professors of law, professors of law, not doctors. Only lawyers, that's the international standards. You know, also can accept that fact. No, but, uh, but the problem is that by the norms of our profession, a lawyer is not supposed to be employed by somebody. No, you choose. It, <laughs> that is the problem. So <laughs> when these when this, uh, uh, organisms you are citing, 
seek the service of a counsel. They will not place him on the salary. That's why you will not seek any a lawyer appearing on the on the on the organic ground. What you have evoked right now is another problem that we still have to tackle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, understand? you understand? You understand? Look at America, all those developed countries. You go to the legal department, you see the lawyers. They consult lawyers. A non-lawyer is not legally fit to give legal advice. I, I, I get this point. That's the, that's the <laughs> fact. This point. So because they don't, our administrators don't have lawyers at their disposal. So they just like communicate and just do things anyhow. Like Donald Trump says, like we're in a shit for the public. You want to deport Camoria in their own country? How? When Camorians are you taking Mexico road? Avoiding deportation in their own country. When the head of state is there, we call deportation. them to call, call on Camoria not to you cannot move imagine. out of the country. You cannot imagine. So, well, that's that. My goal is that that administrator should be sanctioned. Okay, briefly. Um, should not just go like that. By exam written, briefly, before I come briefly, by exam written, now uh, result out. Those who be going to bar are subjected now into some difficult conditions. There, senior barrister issue. We are looking at the fact that they are asking the same person now to certify all their documents. Now, where did they keep the certified documents these people <laughs> use when they wrote the bar exam? Where did they keep it? Second, they are asking them to pay a two-year bar fee in advance that they have not even started practicing. These are people who have been in their house for more than eleven to ten years or twelve years not working. They just came into the profession. They are not even uh, stand their ground. My first question to you, senior counsel, and that probably uh, any bias that Anya will answer. Where did they keep this certified document? Because when they were to write, they certified their documents. Were these documents just taken and they, they passed the true bar? So bar don't have access to these documents again? And they had to start. Uh, thank you, again. thank you, Mr. <laughs> Javis. You are really embarrassing me because uh, <laughs> you are putting your fingers on my wound. <laughs> You see, uh, the, it is very embarrassing because this is the Cameroon Bar Association, which is an elite as a corporation behaving like the civil service. Normally, all the candidates who start that exam, that, that uh, entrance exam to become people, a people advocate, they tendered all the documents that I see being asked, requires, required of them now. It is true there is a, a provision in the organic law of the bar that those documents be, pro be, be provided before these people can take uh, the oath of office. But the bar committed the, uh, the, the mistake of asking them to produce them before. So I, to answer your question, I will simply tell M. Batoni and his counsel, please, withdraw that you are requesting because you already have the documents of these people. You have their documents which they gave to you. Now, you see, you don't have any excuse because you cannot say the documents are with the ministry. The ministry washed their hands off and all the documents are in the keeping of the Kamarumba Association. So, they have the documents. They should not ask people to go and spend more money because look, this is where it is annoying. You are asking children who have never worked. Who have been for more than 11 years. So Some have been, uh, the one in my chambers has been there for eight years. Eight years. I mean, eight years of uh, just waiting. Not on any salary. Then you, you are asking them to go spend so much to put fiscal stamps on all those documents again. And then on top of all that, pay two years in advance bad dues. Mr. Batonio, where do you expect these people to get money from? <laughs> truly, <laughs> truly, <laughs> have many of our colleagues, the senior lawyers, have not paid their bad dues. These are children who are coming in. And you expect them to pay bad You are not, the principals <laughs> have not yet, are not yet under the obligation to give a one kobo because they have not yet taken oath and that they are uh, under their office. So, where do you expect these children to get this money from? That, I think it is a, it's a, it's a social case. The, <laughs> My colleagues have certainly erred in that direction. I know bad news two years in advance. Okay. Uh, you see, before they wrote the exams, we, the principals, were asked to pay bad news two years, uh, one year in advance. We all paid. So now, what is uh, the rationale behind <laughs> asking these children to pay two years, two years in advance? When we, the principals, were asked to pay one, one year. year in advance. Ha! 
Ah ah. <laughs> okay. I mean, we the elders <laughs> pay one year in advance. Then the children who are coming in pay two years in advance. But no, sir. That's no, not, not correct. The issue of the document before they wrote the exams. One of the requirements to write the exams, you com you compile your file, two copies. You send one one to the Minister of Justice and one to the bar president. But now, the bar president, they have the files of all the candidates. Oh, oh, really? Oh, really? That that five copies. Copies. They were just supposed to use that file within their disposal to fulfill whatever thing they intend to. But now they still, they have still asked candidates to constitute another file to pay extra money. Honestly, like senior counsel said, and I've been saying it, I even said it on this platform, many advocates in training, because I've passed about already, so the advocates in training now, they are going through hell just to even raise money. But the bar, they don't give a damn. You must compose the file and you must pay money. And they are even paying exorbitant amount of money just to take hold. In South West there, they have, they, they will not only compose another file, they have, they must have laptops. Hey. Yes. I'm saying it. If there's anybody there to challenge it, come. The bar laws, the bar laws <coughs> do not make provision for that. But they uh, oversee us. Just as you mentioned it, the, the organic law doesn't make provision for <coughs> any laptop. people advocate to pay bad dues in advance. Exactly. So, exactly. that is a violation of the law. You see, that's the problem in Cameroon. You see, lawyers who are supposed to be the light, to show the way, the way you look at lawyers, you see problems left and right. <laughs> Even the mandate of the Batunye, Bar Council member, Bar uh, President of the General Assembly, now is illegal. They were supposed that's to have expired. organized all, uh, elections. It has expired. They are holding an illegal now. It's clear. <laughs> yeah, so even they communicate the science. <laughs> well, that will be the topic for next week, sorry. That will be the topic for next week, sorry. If, if you will be available, I'm sure we can. Okay. Yeah, we'll take the bar. We'll take the bar next week, Sunday. We'll really talk on this. Uh, thank you for coming, Nick. We're out of time. <laughs> thank you also for having me. Thank you to our fellow listeners who have spent time to watch us this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Senior Bicer Ashu. Uh, maybe I'll ask her to potential voters and uh, members of Reform Party. Please don't be intimidated. Go and register massively. I heard one of these uh, uh, listeners say he has not yet registered. Please, honor your country by registering. Don't allow other people to decide for you. <coughs> it is by registering to vote that you will be able to choose the, which type of leader you want for your country. So please register, and uh, the people of the of uh, our of our uh, uh, regions, of the English speaking region, please don't be intimidated. There is nobody who can stop elections in the entire territory. There's no po no such person. They may succeed in the, uh, uh, disturbing elections in a few localities, but not everywhere. So register massively. There will be elections, and we have to put an end to this crisis by putting in place okay. a party, like Reform Party, that can bring an end to this crisis. Pastor Lewis, thank you for coming. Well, as a lawyer, my goal is that the law should be respected. The rule of law is above all of us. My only appeal now is for the president to proceed and implement the law on the declaration of assets and property fully. Even though that, that declaration of assets, it has one shortcoming. Like in other in developed countries, some public officials, they do anticipatory declaration. Like for instance, when you just get into office, you are worth 10 million. The official may say, okay, by the time I'm leaving office after four or five years, I may have embezzled like uh, 50 million. And he declares 50 million. In advance, in other You see countries. the shortcoming now of that, uh, that, that declaration yeah. policy. Okay. Yeah. We are, so, we are well, at least let's get there first. So, um, thank you very much. Next week, Sunday, we shall look at the bar in X ray that is cross section in the bar and looking at also what needs to be done in order to impact the people, lawyers, as far as that is concerned. I want to thank you, Senior Barrister, for coming. Thank you, Barrister Anya, for coming. And of course, Nick Anu, this program comes up every Sunday at exactly 11, uh, 12 to 1.30 p.m. rebroadcast is this same Sunday at 10.30 p.m. If you want to be a panelist, member of our program, to come and discuss on issues affecting our society, you can contact me on the number you see on your screen. I want to thank you, Desmond Akeba, the producer of this program, and also thank all those of you who produce the program, the studio director, and also thank you, Noel, and also Alain, if it's Alain who is there, all legend who is there, I'll leave you with this, no matter the matter, what matters is your matter. And what should matter for you as senators and MP is that 
this issue of declaration of asset should be the core to fight against corruption, embezzlement, and misappropriation of state funds. Until we meet again, my name is Tamai Javis. Stay blessed and bye-bye. Stay out of trouble.